In episode 3, Lorraine tells us a poignant family story. Judith takes us through her blooming cottage garden. And Graham reads his first lockdown poem. In between, there are short snippets of what happens in our daily meetups. Who's was the best brown ale, best brown ale, best brown ale? Who's was the best brown ale? Let's have one. I think I'm waiting to hear. <laughs> it's a one man show, Graham. <laughs> 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 This isn't really my story, it belongs to my mum. My mum's 91 and we've always had a close relationship. But since the lockdown, this has become more so because we decided as a family, in order to try and keep her safe, we'd we'd cancel our regular daytime carers and I would step in and the rest of the family would keep her to distance. So she has a morning carer and then I go in the afternoon, stay with her for a while, make her evening meal and then come home and do whatever, well I do whatever else is needed of course, you know, washing or whatever. Spending this extra time with my mum, it, it's been really nice and it hasn't really felt like a chore, I can honestly say that because I suppose all my activities have come to a standstill, so time has sort of become a bit, well, it's become a bit irrelevant. Every day I go to my mum's about quarter to four, just in time for the last round of Tenable. My mum likes quizzes. She watches them quite a lot. In fact, I think she watches them all day. I think she likes quizzes because it puts a lot of stuff in her head that stops her thinking about the things that worry her or the things she doesn't want to think about. When she was 10, her sister died. Her sister was 12 and they did everything together. They slept in the same bed, they shared an egg at tea time. And they used to go dancing, singing and dancing with my grandma. My grandma was a pub singer And she used to sing round the pubs and clubs and she'd take the two little girls with her and they did a little dance routine and my granddad would play the piano. I know that my mum sang The Bird in Nellie's Hat, which is an old musical song. But Connie died in the space of 48 hours, so it was very sudden. And they made my mum say goodbye to her sister in a coffin. I suppose they thought they were doing the right thing and I know a lot of people would say, yeah, that's, you know, you can't shield children from the realities of life and, and death. But all it did for my mum really was it left her with an image of a sister lying there, holding a lily. And she still cries about it, even now, all of these years later. And we've cried together about it on more than one occasion. I don't mean this to be miserable and maudlin and, 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 or anything, and, but, but it's, just, it's just what it is. So anyway, we have a little routine. When I get to my mum, she'll say, put the kettle on, so I go and make a drink. And we watch Tipping Point, followed by The Chase. And sometimes she'll put the quiz channel on and we'll watch some of the old ones like um, Blankety Blank. On Blankety Blank, there used to be about six celebrities answering these questions or helping the contestants. And we tried to decide between us which ones are dead and which ones are still alive. And if, if we're not sure, I look on Wikipedia. Anyway. In between all this, I'm cooking the tea and doing what I have to do. I think spending this time with my mummy, it's made me reflect on um, my childhood, really. And I've started to write it down, although I don't know, well, if anybody will read it, they might do, I don't know. But anyway, it's out of my head because a lot of stuff's going around my head about it all. 
And one of the things that really sticks in my mind is the Sunday teas. On a Sunday, my mum used to let me make the tea for her, my brother and myself. And we used to have chicken paste sandwiches, a tin of fruit cocktail and a tin of plum rose cream with a bit of sugar in. And one of those little box cakes, I used to say they were Viota, but they're not Viota, are they? They, they? I think they must have been lions or something, them little cakes you get from the corner shop. And I can remember, you know, feeling so proud of myself doing this. It was like, I don't know, felt all grown up. But the funny thing is my mum doesn't remember. She doesn't remember this at all. And I think talking to my own daughters, I, I realise that, you know, children remember things that are different to what you remember, you know. Spending this time with my mum during the lockdown, it's, it's, been, it's been lovely. It's been really nice, don't get me wrong. We've had our spats, with, it's, it's not all sweetness and light, but on the whole, it's been a gift. It has. It's really been a gift. One of the most moving things for me was my father was looking at his hands. It was only a few days before he died. And his fingernails were really, you know, dirty and wanted cutting. And I got a bowl of hot water and all I did was just wash his hands and cut his fingernails and I felt absolutely wonderful doing that. It was really, it was a really moving moment. And um, it made me feel at peace after he died because I felt I'd actually done something for him that was so simple. Uh, anyway, so that's what I did. Dave, when you got up to go out, you disappeared into the mist. Yeah, you blended. Like, uh, could, could we have a repeat of that, please? Because it, it was fascinating <laughs> to see you just disappear into the mist and then come back again. Hey, I'm, I'm going. Yeah. Uh, do what? Do, 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 Need to go smaller up to the size of the trees as well. It's amazing. Now, come on, we got to solve Sandy's issue here about what we're going to do with these with these rhubarbs. You can well, make rhubarb champagne, can't you? Rhubarb champagne. I'm making a note of all these. A you have to keep it for a while because it, it'll have to ferment. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll all come round and drink it. Even, <laughs> even if you haven't got a freezer, you can, if you just put a bit of sugar in them and just cook them very, very slightly, they'll, they'll survive for ages. Right. Do that again, Dave. You were coming in for landing then, weren't you? Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, can't, I can't do it because the photograph. I was going to give you a picture of Scarborough North Beach um, from yesterday. Go on. Uh, I can't. It, oh yeah, it, it's in landscape, and I've got to. I've got to work out how to twist it round so it's in portrait. Otherwise, it's on its side. Well, you could. Again, you could sit. Side put, it on, put it on its side. It's good. It's good exercise for us. Yeah. <laughs> we we can't can't on <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it just looks a bit weird. Sunday. No, Carol's no. just sent me a oh, message. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Rhubarb go recipe. Like that, Dave. Go Sorry, Tony, I can't hear you. Tony. 53 yeah, rhubarb re recipes. All oh, right. It's uh, delicious magazines or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Everybody's tilting recipes. over. What's going on? <laughs> delicious magazines. <laughs> I'll lift it up. Thanks, Tony. Was it Sorry, nice? Tony, that was that was very rude of us all. We were trying to orientate to Dave's picture. Oh. So that's why we were all like that. Come on, folks. Back to business. Here's Judith in her garden. This is my backyard, my lockdown solace. I rent the house. I've been here six years. The yard was completely derelict when I arrived. 
there was a corner bed here to the right it had nothing in it whatsoever except a very ragged crocosmia in need of attention this year I decided I might need some veg as I thought we might be running out of food prior to lockdown I put some potatoes in here and I also have plastic greenhouse with my tomatoes in there are some cauliflower and sprouting broccoli looking in a very bad way indeed <laughs> again the clematis have done really well it always seems to happen that it, we get wind and rain when the clematis are out My fern does well, it always does because it's very shady on this side of the garden. My basket, move the bench to this side for the summer. In the winter and spring it needs to be on the other side because it doesn't get any sun on this side. This corner bed is now a complete jumble. I couldn't put any bedding in this year. It's the lavender trying to come out. It's spectacular when it does. The poppies have been my salvation. As they have just seeded themselves everywhere. And they are spectacular, even in the rain because the droplets fall onto the leaves and they are really, really pretty, like jewels. Derelict yard in the rain. What's green and hairy and goes up and down? <laughs> okay, Judith. What is green, hairy, and goes up and down? Hey, I don't know. A gooseberry and a lift. Graham has written many poems over the last six months. Here's one back at the beginning of lockdown. Uh, what I did was I looked up the definition of lockdown in the dictionary and I got two definitions. And the first one is the confining of prisoners to their cells, typically to regain control during a riot. And the second one was a state of isolation or restricted access instituted as a security measure. So uh, my poem is kind of follows on from that. Okay. Lockdown is a compound word with negative connotations, the closure and shutting off of everyday situations. The opposite, of course, would be to begin to open up, exchange a leaking vessel for an overflowing cup. The fumes, the noise, the bustle have all but gone away, replaced by forgotten birdsong all through the waking day. A brisk walk to the river to watch the seasons blend from springtime into summer, new vistas round each bend. For some at least, a garden offers jointly toil and leisure. Alas, the high-rise dweller is denied this simple pleasure. As a result of retail closure, we are buying much less trash, but those whose jobs are threatened are running out of cash. Some only see their grandkids through glass or flickering screens, and they in turn miss their peers and games, especially those restless teens. The zooming boom has helped, helped us all to meet more than we used, to share our thoughts, our triumphs, our failures, and our news. We don't know where this all will end, for many tragedy struck, but we have all survived and thrived with sense and some good luck. 
Tomorrow is another day, as hopeful Scarlet said. So we must all look forward as we step down from our bed. Many problems still abound. Climate, gender, race. Who knows, our lockdown experience might make the world a better place. <laughs> Mum was going to the shops. What would you ask her not to forget? <laughs> Is that a clue? It, I think so, yeah. I hope so, yeah. Other than that, other way I'm losing my mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's give the last word to Derek. And his dad. This, this is one of my dad's certificates from his allotments. Can you see it on camera? Yeah. yeah. Second yeah. class. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Two. Uh, he, he was a bus conductor at this time, and that's the Merseyside passenger transport class 63 cabbage, H.J. <laughs> Coleman, 12th of September 1973. <laughs> Brilliant. Did he only get second prize? This one. Oh, I'll put that one. That, can, can you see that one? Yeah, why did he get, who got the first prize? Well, he, he had plenty of uh, first prizes as well, but it, they, they, I had so ma many of them that I thought, I could, you, know, you know when you're throwing things out and you think I can only keep a selection of these, and that one's onions, you're getting snooty, this is even... A third prize on shallots. <laughs> that's good. That's shallot. That's shallot. That's shallot. Yep, that's shallot, folks. Mm -hmm.